Hey, what's happening, guys? What I have for you today is as um, Ave from Ave's channel, and uh, if you haven't ever watched him, I'll put a link down below. He's pretty cool. As Ave would say, a treat especial. This is the cutting edge of technology. The bleeding edge, if you will. What I have made for you today is an Arduino water detector. And I will show it to you. And you can marvel at its brilliance. I'm just kidding. I mean, it is a water detector, but it's not the cutting edge of technology. Anyway, this is the water detector probe. It is two pieces of wire spaced about a quarter inch apart. For those of you who are of the metric persuasion, I don't know what the hell it is. It's about a quarter inch apart. Now, let us zoom into the goodies. All right, to begin with, we have five volts and ground coming over from the Arduino. Then we have how the probes are attached. One of the probe leads goes directly to five volts. That's this blue wire. And it goes into the container where we're checking for water. The other lead, this green one right here, get out of there blue. The green one is plugged in here along with this yellow wire and the yellow wire goes to digital pin 8 and it has a 10k pull down resistor on it as well so it is held at ground potential next over here we have a yellow LED and it's got its current limiting resistor soldered onto the cathode and with this blue wire it comes over to digital pin 6 I'm using 6 because we are using a PWM function here. And then finally we have an active buzzer, which gets 5 volts ground and its signal pin comes over to digital pin 2. So, the way this works is, you place the highly sophisticated, technologically advanced water detection probes into a container that you wish to check for water. You'll notice this one has the Glenlivet label on it. Anyway, and if water is detected, it will sound an alarm and flash an LED. Nothing complicated here at all. This is all very simple. Basically what we've created with these two wires is a switch. And if the water has any salinity at all, and this is the finest water from the Monongahela, the Allegheny, and the Ohio rivers. Trust me, there's some salinity to it. It will conduct electricity, it will complete the circuit, and the switch will close. All right, let's look at the code. All right, here's the code for my Arduino water alarm. Now. If you don't know how to wire up a button, it goes like this. We have five volts going to one side of the probe. And then we have our digital pin with the other side of the probe and also connected to D8 or wherever we're connecting our pin is a 10K pull down resistor to ground. So that's how it's connected. I just wanted to put that there so you would understand. All right, we have some defines. Our LED is on digital 6, our H2O switch digital 8, and the buzzer is on digital 2. We have two variables, and they're both Boolean variables, which means they can be a 1 or a 0 or a true or a false. The first one is trigger. And that's what happens when water is detected. The second one is, oh shit, 
That's what happens after the alarm has gone off. Now we have in our setup very simply three pin modes. LED is output, H2O switch is input, and buzzer is output. Now down to our main loop. We say trigger equals digital read H2O switch. So that is assigning the value of the H2O switch. Since it's a digital read, it will be either a 1 or a 0 to trigger. Now remember, trigger is a Boolean type variable. So we don't have to say if trigger equals 1. We can say if trigger. And it knows 1 or true. So if trigger, we call the function alarms. Else, meaning if not trigger, then we just keep trigger at a value of zero. Now we'll skip over the oh shit for now. We'll come down here to the function called alarms. And the first thing it does is it turns on the buzzer. Then we do a little for loop here for integer i equals zero. As long as i is less than 255, i is equal to i plus 2. And that creates a little for loop with pwm values. Oh, look at that. Can't stand things that are out of line. Gave me shivers. Then we do an analog write LED at the value of i, and we delay it for 10 milliseconds. Then we shut off the buzzer shut off the LED and we set our other boolean variable oh shit which is a flag to 1 which means water has been detected then we go back to the main loop which at the end of every loop it checks if oh shit then digital write LED high leave it on for 50 milliseconds shut it off for 500 milliseconds and that gives us a nice little annoying blink to let you know that water has been detected. Else, we leave oh shit at zero. Let's go take a look at it. Now I know you're all itching to see it in action. Well, this is a totally freestanding device. It needs no computer, so we'll power it with one of these little banks. Plug her in. We have our water source, and as the probes go into the water, it sounds the alarm. Now you notice after the alarm has been sounded we have this little reminder LED that flashes to let us know that water has been detected while we were not paying attention and perhaps we should go in the basement or wherever we're checking and make sure there's no damage. So this is a prototype of a water detection circuit and what I'm going to do is I'm going to incorporate this into a wireless weather station. Not with these two wires as such, but you'll see what I'm doing in the next video. I just wanted to show you the theory behind it and how it all goes together. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a thumbs up, comment, and share. Don't forget to subscribe. And hey, before you go away, I didn't show you guys the night mode on the fish tank when we did the updates. So there's a couple seconds of bonus footage here at the end. All right, peace out.